I want to start with some video. This is uh, from the Middle East. Watch this, watch this guy and that guy with a backpack. They're going out, that is a pile of dead bodies there, and there's a little girl, and they need to get her out away from ISIS. So they are coming out from cover and shooting while he goes out and gets this child. Now, this guy right here just reloading. Let's go to the next clip. He actually pays a high price for this. There, he just got shot uh, for his involvement, but the girl is still safe, and he has returned home. You might know him uh, because he has been on the program before, and he's also written a new book. It is this book. Um, uh, it is City of Death, Humanitarian Warriors in the Battle of Mosul. His name is Ephraim Matos, and he is with us now. Ephraim, good to have you back. Thank you for having me on. Always a pleasure. We have you here because you are actually working in Burma to save Christians, and you're working mm -hmm. with the Nazarene Fund. And most people have no idea what's going on in Burma at all. Right. But yeah, most people have no clue. <laughs> right. And how many Christians have been killed in Burma? Wow, tens of thousands, easily. Tens of thousands. And this war has been going on since, um, since the 1940s. So it, as, in January, it'll be 70 years straight of civil war going on inside the country. So countless, countless but this lives. Is, and the, is this the first time that the Christians have been targeted like this? Because they targeted is Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and how many did they kill of Islam? Well, they, they, they got thousands. So just last year, what you're referring to is the um, a genocide that happened to the Rohingya a minority population, predominantly Muslims. They pushed more than a, about, a, a, about a million of these Muslims out of the country. And this has been going on with the Christians for the longest time as well. They, back in the 90s, there was another huge push like we just saw last year with the Muslims. It just happened with the uh, Karen um, in the early 90s, and they're gearing up to do it again. Show me what it's like on the streets. Let, let's uh, watch a little video uh, of what it's like in Burma. Tell me about this. So this right here, this is actually a Karen refugee camp, and these are people who are displaced from the fighting, and they're stuck just, you know, in these, it's basically a, it's basically a large slum, about 30,000 people in this small little area right here. Wow. And you can see this father here, he's, uh, he's carrying his, his, his kid, and as with, with the Nazarene Fund, we're in there making sure that, that these people don't have to go to this camp. There are kids here who were, were born in this, were in this camp and are not allowed to leave the camp. That little girl right there, yeah, she's, she's, less than, she's less than 10 years old. I can almost guarantee that she was born in this refugee camp. And you can see that they hang their clothes, all the things from there. Um, who are these? And these right here are uh, Karen soldiers who are actually going to um, help protect the civilians. And, and transportation in the country is extremely difficult. So right there on the left side of the screen, that's Burma. On the right side of the screen, that's actually Thailand. Um, and these guys are going in to, to protect the civilians and keep, and keep uh, what's happening uh, from continuing to happen. So what, uh, what is the Nazarene Fund doing over there? How are we helping? So the Nazarene Fund, we are putting together a rescue and relief team. So right now, the uh, Burma army is preparing for a massive attack against the Karen people. Right now, they're already attacking the Kachin ethnic minority in the north, who are 90% Christian. They're now moving down and getting ready to hit the Karen. So we're helping the Karen. We're putting together a rescue and relief team. They're already together. They're already on the ground. They've already conducted several missions. And we are helping to keep refugees from becoming refugees in the first place. And then once it does happen, we're there to defend them, there to help them. And these are, these are, uh, these are local guys doing this. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's not always uh, Westerners. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the local guys who are enabling them to defend their own families. When I was over in Iraq and Syria, the refugee camps are awful and terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and they're glad to be in the refugee camps oh, yeah, compared to, <laughs> you know. Um, what, do, what do you... What do you see happening here? Why are people not talking about this global genocide of, of Christians that's going on right now? You know, I, I, I'm not sure why people don't, don't pay attention to it more. Um, you know, honestly, it, it, honestly, I don't understand that, and it blows my mind because I've, I've been there and I've seen this, and I, I know what's happening. I've tripped over the, the piles of, of bodies of people who've been massacred, and I've, I've, I've been there and I've helped rescue these people, and it, it, it tears me apart that more people don't care about it. But I guess one of the things we can do is you, you help tell the story, and you, you raise awareness for it, and then, and then people can get involved. And I think when people do actually hear what's going on over there, they always say, oh my goodness, what can I do to help? And um, I, I, think, I think you're doing it right with, with the Nazarene Fund 
and, and, and spreading the word about it because these people are largely forgotten. When I, when I, I'll tell you a story. When I first started working with these guys, they, they would always ask me, these, these individual uh, you know, villagers would come up to me and they would say, hey, how did, th through an interpreter, they'd say, how did you hear about us? That's what they would always ask me. I was asked that maybe a dozen times over the course of like a week or so. And, and I asked my interpreter, I was like, why do they keep on asking me if, uh, how I heard about them? And, they, and he said, because we've been doing this for 70 years and no one's ever come to help us you know, in mass. So they want to know, why are you here to help us? Where did you hear about it? And it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And you're like, all right, we're, we're here. <laughs> we're going to help you now. And we're going to tell more people about what you're doing. And um, they're, they're beyond thrilled. That was the scary thing of when you really think about when we first started the Nazarene Fund, how many people were praying to God, please, please let somebody hear our voices, let somebody see our plight. Mm -hmm. And nobody was. Mm -hmm. And to uh, th th what helps me sleep at night is what this audience has done to be able to have those people know there is someone that cares, there mm -hmm. is, so they're not forgotten. They're not forgotten. We may not get to you per se, mm -hmm. but there is help coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the the pile of people that were that you had that little girl you rescued that little girl mm -hmm. is that is this what were they Christians? Was this just no? These these were not Christians. These were um, actually most of these people were were uh, Sunni Muslims who decided to leave the Islamic Caliphate and flee toward the Iraqi army who was Shia. And so because they were now um, apostates, according to the ISIS fighters, now they can do whatever they want to them. And so killing them, leaving them out there for bait, as bait for us, um, was completely okay, according to their ideology, their twisted ideology. And the same stuff happens in, in Burma. The same sort of stuff happens where you get this twisted ideology that someone else is, is, not, uh, is not equal with you because of their, 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 their tribe or their religion. And, you know, and they see Christianity also as a threat as well because they see that as a Western influence and they don't want the Western influence there. So they target Christians because, oh, you must be working with Westerners or you must and have some sort of they don't even know Western any Westerners. Alliance. No, mostly people, it was funny, my, my, uh, one of the trips, one of my first trips into Burma, I, I got to go very, very deep into, uh, into, the, uh, into, the, into the jungle. And um, they told me, they were like, you're, you're, the first, you're the first white man to be back here since the British left during World War II. Amazing, absolutely amazing how far the reach is right now of the Nazarene Fund. And I also, another day, um, there were villagers around this hut that I was living in, and I went outside, my interpreter said, hey, come meet these people. And they wanted to meet me because they had never seen a white person before. And so these people are not associated with us, you know, at all, but they're targeted because, oh, you're Christian? You must be associated with the Westerners, even though they've never, they've never seen us. It's amazing. What, uh, what is it like being someone who the enemy will recognize you on site. You're not blending in. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, so they know you're not on their side. Mm -hmm. What is that like to be pretty alone? Um, well, it's, it's one of those things. So my, my background, I was, I was a Navy SEAL. This is, this is what we do. This is, this is how we help people. We go in, we take, those, we take the, a little bit of extra risk that other people aren't necessarily going to do. And you, you just accept the risk. And ultimately, when you're doing what you're doing out of love because you care for the people, there's no fear. There's no, there's no consternation because you know that you're doing the right thing. You know, I sleep peacefully at night because I go and I help these people because I have the ability to help them. And these people, they, I trust them and they hide me. They, they take me wherever they, wherever they need to. And, you know, talking about being alone, I spent like three and a half weeks at one point in a small valley. I wasn't allowed to leave this little valley in the middle of the jungle. The only, you know, uh, Westerner out there, and one other guy could speak, you know, uh, broken English, and he was my only person to communicate with. And, you know, they, they, they do take care of me, and they, they do defend me, but at the same point, it's like, uh, you know, they're, they're, risking, they're risking their lives to, to, to have me there. Yeah. So, like, I'm also going to partake in that. How, um, uh, how close to this have you come? I mean, you're, and, and is it overwhelming force when you're the, the, the other side, I don't even know who the other side is. What's so the other side, the, the, the bad guys, mm -hmm. <laughs> are the, the, the Burmese army. Okay. The, the, uh, the guys who control the government, okay. it's the actual government forces that are doing And how well things. equipped are they? They are extremely well equipped in comparison to the guys that, we're, that, that, that we work with. So, they have, so the bad guys have tanks, helicopters, mortars, howitzers, you name it, they've, they've got it. 
they've got plenty of ammunition, they've got insane amounts of, of firepower, and we have another clip too of, um, of some gunfire that I think we'll show here in a minute. Yeah, real uh, quick, so we, have a, we have about a minute, what is this? So right now you can hear in the background there's yeah. machine gun fire. Over on that far hill, that's the Burma Army position, and all of the gunfire that you hear, um, all these pops and explosions, that's the Burma Army's response to one of the Karen guys firing one bullet. One of the Karen guys fired one bullet, wow. and they were met with at least a thousand rounds of incoming fire. All of that. I Army. can't thank you enough, Ephraim, for all that you do, and um, thank you for coming back and and exposing all of this. Thank you for your book. This this actually co-written by Scott McEwen, who um, uh, was the co-author of American Sniper, which was amazing. It's a great book, um, but share this information with your friends, please. Share this information with your friends. Uh, Christians, believe it or not, are in the fight for their life all around the world. Thanks, Ephraim. Back Thank in you. Minute.